Okay, so arrived on uh, in the mail today, guys, on the uh, slow built boat for China is my little uh, Fenirsi. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. It's a company name. You guys know what I'm talking about. And it's a DSO model uh, 152. Now, I've got a bunch of different scopes, but the beauty of this scope is, in all honesty, is price. It's as cheap as chips, it really is. And uh, to me, this is an absolute marvel <laughs> in technology with respect to how much it cost. This cost me about $28 Canadian, all in, right to the door. It's about $20-ish American. Now, I know that's not affordable for everybody on the planet, but it's getting close, very close, right? So, when I took an interest in uh, cars, oh, I don't know, I think it was in my teens sometimes, so 45 years ago, let's call it. You know, having an oscilloscope uh, was completely out of the question. It was just absurdly expensive back in the day. I've, I've even got tools that were cost, I bought them used, I didn't pay this kind of money, but I've got tools that were worth literally thousands of dollars in their, uh, when they were new uh, in their day. And that's no longer an issue or even an excuse, really. You know, a lot of guys who are interested in uh, modern cars, they just have no clue or no interest in, you know, a waveform or understanding what's really going on on that level because of the expense associated with it. Well, for $20, you can kind of step into this realm. So that excuse evaporates in a big hurry, right? So... This is not a high performance machine by any stretch of the imagination, but it's certainly fast enough for most automotive applications. Yeah, maybe you can't see the CAN bus on it, but I'll put that to the test later on to see just what we can see with it. But it's only got a 200K bandwidth, but the sampling rate is fast at 2.5 uh, mega samples per second. And it's got really no memory buffer, but you can run some extremely long time bases, meaning you can capture a lot of time on screen. I mean, a ridiculous amount of team time. Yes, the resolution is going to drop because you're constantly trading off, you know, time base for sample rate, but that's neither here nor there. The point to this little video is, guys, I'm going to use this, this little uh, scope as a vehicle to do a little scope basics uh, training um series of videos and the idea being is if you're interested go buy one then you'll get the most value out of the little series of videos if you actually have a scope any scope will do a scope's a scope you know all the basics are the same 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 the three basics being having an understanding for uh, the amplitude or the voltage uh, axis which is actually the y-axis there is a Y and an X axis on the graticule here, basically the squares that are shown on the screen. And uh, we'll talk about the understanding of that. The X axis is for time. You know, you have a time base, the, the little squares on the graticule here are breaking up the, uh, the time per division. Anyway, I'm getting too involved. We'll explain this as the little series goes along. So we'll explain the voltage or amplitude, the time base, and also there's a little tiny arrow there, the trigger and understanding types of triggers and how they actually work. There's three different triggers on this little rig, believe it or not. And uh, having an understanding for that is essential in being able to use a scope. Disregard the measurement functions that are all on there, guys. I just left it on there because it's capable of eight different measuring functions, just incredibly. So. Here's the credit cards. This is a standard credit card size, you know? It's just a wee bit bigger than a credit card, and you think, well, that's, that's awfully small, right? But for comparison's sake here, guys, here's my Hantec uh, handheld scope. This is the uh, 2C42 Hantec. And if you look at the screen, they're basically the same size. Yes, it's a much bigger rig, 10 times the price of this uh, little scope. To be fair, it's two channel and does do a little bit more, but not a great deal more to be quite honest. 
So I'm really looking forward to putting this little rig through its paces when we do the actual little um, introductory program to uh, how to use an oscilloscope. Um, it's not near as difficult as some people would lead you to believe. You know, some of the guys that use scopes like to pretend they're a lot smarter than everybody else. And some of them are, but most of them are not. Believe me, if I can if I can use one of these to some and get some utility out of it, you can do the exact same thing. So anyway, this is the, again, I'm gonna mispronounce it, but just tolerate it, guys. The Fernisi DS-0152. Go to your, uh, your favorite Chinese retailer, you know, overseas retailer, online retailer. This came from AliExpress. I'm not selling any of this stuff, guys. I don't care where you spend your money. That's, that's up to you. But this was just a little, about $20, plus or minus a few cents um, American, as I said, but $28 Canadian. So if you're interested, I'll see you shortly, and we'll start looking at the basics. We'll start from the very, very basics, 101 oscilloscope use. That's it, boys. <laughs> Cheers.